It's like having Darth Vader under the bonnet, which is a horrible cliche. I apologise. I'm currently touring New Zealand in a Ford Fairmont AU. This moves things on a generation and it's also sportier. This is a 2003 Ford XR6. Uh, it's the performance model. It has the legendary Barra engine. I think we should see what the differences are with the AU and then go for a very enjoyable drive. So uh, yeah, a, a, a um, Ford XR6, the uh, meaty Falcon, the performance version. We only got XR2s, XR3s and XR4s in the UK, so this is already quite exciting. Um, compared to the AU, the body shell is pretty much identical. It's been masked by a different front end treatment using a slightly data, different um, for design language so not so much new edge more the next generation closer to the mark III mondeo over say a mark one focus it's got these scalloped front lights that were carried over to the bf falcon the normal bas the non-performance versions had a straight lamp here at the front got big alloy wheels because performance and subtle changes to the body shell here an au windscreen would curve down here this goes up here but the roof line inside still covers all this that's just covering roofing material the doors pretty much identical to an au falcon as is this very distinctive point um, here and the rear window but the rear wings again refined it's a bit wider a bit broader at the back which gets rid of some of the um, unpleasantness they're a bit gawky the au falcons these look, look better and the boot is larger because it's just a more practical shape oh did i mention turbo oh yes under the skin all um, ba falcons uh, saloons had uh, the independent rear suspension that was previously only on top spec models of the previous au generation um, but yeah the, the main talking point is that um, barrer engine so i think we should probably take a look and here we go the legendary barrer um, but um, although the, the Barra is a very legendary engine, its history is actually quite old. It's still an evolution of the original Falcon six-cylinder engine from the 1960s. Uh, whereas the AU introduced, a, uh, or it didn't introduce it, it was just a big feature and they put badges on the side to make the point. Uh, the AU used a single cam version of that engine, which came in during the um, early 90s, I think. Um, this uses um, a twin cam um, head it's got um, 24 valves therefore uh, four per cylinder and a dual vct variable valve timing as well it's got the same interesting um, dual intake plenum as the um, au so it uses different plenum piping depending on throttle load to boost low down torque um, but yeah these can be tuned to a very silly amount of power and this one has some mild modifications. I think that is a slightly larger turbocharger than standard down there. Uh, it can be tweaked up to quite a lot of power. At the moment, is pushing the limits of the valve springs. Um, they can't really cope with the amount of bo boost he can put through this engine. So I think it's currently in the region of about 330 brake horsepower. But um, when he turns the boost up to more than 5 PSI, it can produce um, over 400 and uh, these engines are reg becoming very popular in drag racing because they can handle six or seven hundred horsepower on the stock internals remarkably robust engine and very long lived uh, this car has done 200,000 kilometers and is actually on its second engine this one's done about 70,000 miles moving inside um, they've managed to disguise the origins quite well here i think we've got these um, meaty bucket seats because it's an XR so you obviously need a bit more bolster to hold you in place uh, adjustable lumbar support electric height and tilt going on there um, but generally if I climb aboard you'll see it's um, again a, a refreshed design language very very similar to the Mark III Mondeo Mark II Focus um, I can't say I like it all that much I find this a bit shiny and nasty it is soft touch because apparently you must have plastics that 
um, feel like something I don't know really don't understand again different design language with the switch gear a different um, automatic gearbox selector so you got um, a tiptronic effect over here to go up and down the gears or you just slam it in D and leave it there frankly build quality is not perhaps the best I mean it isn't great in the AU either um, so there's um, yeah various attempts to try and silence some of the creaky plastics electrics also can be a bit flaky I've already had the speedometer um, pack up on me and um, failed to work but a reboot managed to sort that out um, again we've got column stalks set for the Australian market so the indicators right and uh, buttons on the steering wheel for um, your cruise control and your stereo settings electric window switches over here look a bit more robust than the um, AU ones which are a bit inferior I would suggest but yeah 260 kilometers an hour on the um, speedo I'm just trying to get the key out which um, is of the flippy type and uh, just put that on just so I can wake up this screen in the middle look at that welcome Ford interior command center um, so that's where you can see what's going on it seems very low tech now but uh, 2003 quite a long time ago I guess um, airbag storage down there we've got um, a bit of storage in the doors as well again very very strong Ford design philosophy Ford Australia didn't really get to design their cars um, they were designed for them by the Americans and uh, I think we probably better go and have a look at what it's like in the back and the news is good it's a bit dark because this example has a black headliner I don't think that was standard fit but uh, nonetheless it's nice to be in a Ford Falcon where the headliner isn't trying to fall onto my head but plenty of room down here I can get my feet under the seat in front uh, it feels quite a comfortable if rather firm seat but um, yeah not a bad place to be at all nice fairly large windows really um, so um, yeah I'm gonna say this is quite all right there's no center armrest and um, I don't think you'd want to be the third person sitting in the middle on these seats but you do get separate vents in the back as well so that's quite nice and of course uh, pockets for your map so it's got to be quite a small map to fit in there uh, yeah not bad now one annoyance does remain the only way to open the boot is either with the button on the fob or the dashboard button uh, there is no external release on the boot which is good for security but not so good when you actually just want to get into the boot uh, it is a good old size um, because uh, this wing line is slightly higher so um, yeah big depth in there and um, it seems the floor has been molded more than it has been in the AU the AU has a very flat floor uh, although maybe this is because it has independent rear suspension so maybe it's actually losing a bit in that regard but um, can we have a peek underneath here? Can we get this up? Oh, a few tools, always good to have. And there's a full-size spare wheel down there. That's quite impressive. So yeah, good size boot. And uh, this, these indentations help because you can kind of wedge your shopping in a bit more. So that's actually useful to have. But really, we just want to see what this car's like to drive, don't we? So um, fire the engine up. Um, got the aircon running. Um, I don't know if I can turn the fan speed down a little. I've oh, got the engine fan cutting in there. Uh, I seem to be on the slowest fan setting, and no, I'm not turning it off because, um, yeah, we, we are um, hot, hot, hot today. Aftermarket boost gauge here because the owner likes to know how boosty things are. And it's a 60 kilometer an hour road, so I can't go crazy just yet. So we'll take an easy start. And so far it feels much like the AU, but it does feel sharper. Uh, whereas the AU, um, of course being a Fairmont, is a bit softer anyway. This feels notably sharper, it responds much better to the steering. It doesn't quite feel like a tiny little hot hatch, but nonetheless you can kind of pitch it into a bend and feel pretty confident it's going to go around it. It's got a limited slip um, differential as well, whereas uh, my AU Fairmont just makes one tyre fires all the time. Um, so this can actually get its extra power down and that is a considerable amount of extra power being a naturally torquey engine it helps mask the um, turbo lag a little uh, so it's relatively brisk um, off boost 
but um, oh yeah she'll pick up quite nicely once we get underway and yes it has got a, quite a silly blow off valve fitted so it does go whoosh quite dramatically I quite like it I must be a child Yeah, one, one issue is it is still a big car so on a tight twisty road like this it does still feel um, its size a little but yeah at the moment this is the owner's daily driver so um, yeah when you wanted to she will get a shift on but um, maybe we should try and find a bit of road but it hasn't got quite so many bends upon it but I can feel the difference of the independent rear suspension. It feels a much more mature drive. Uh, the AU, uh, mine's just a Fairmont rather than the Fairmont gear, so it's got a beam rear axle. This feels better and um, somehow feels more composed, despite the fact it's got quite stiff springing and damping being the sports model. Oh yeah, she does motor on. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that's a decent amount of heft, I would say. She um, goes well, sounds magnificent, I think. Lovely sounding engine. Properly gruff. Oh, I feel like Benny in his Cresta. I don't feel like Benny in his Cresta. He's got four mo far more beard than me. If you've no idea what I'm on about, go and check out um, Benny's custom works on YouTube. He's got a Toyota Cresta, Speedo's packed up again, um, and uh, that's got a barrier engine in it. Like I say, they're becoming very popular in drag racing, and he's done amazing things. It really shows you what these cars can do. Oh, I've got the traction control light on now as well. Interesting. And the airbag light and the gearbox is flashing at me um, yeah I think it's fair to say they, they are prone to the odd electrical grumble these cars and uh, it's especially worrying that I can't see the speedo because um, I have no idea how fast I'm going I'm gonna just pull in here oh good brakes whereas my AU often feels a little under braked that feels, um, yeah, decently um, retardy. Is that retardy a thing? I don't know. But we shall have a pause and we shall reset. It's like having Darth Vader under the bonnet, which is a horrible cliche, I apologize. Just experimenting to see whether you can get away with not using um, all of the hoof and yeah she does pick up speed nicely just with the um, sheer abundance of torque that's uh, very impressive we should probably check the wipers I don't think they're very different to um, an AU to be honest oh maybe they are actually they don't seem to get quite so close to the A pillar but no triangle of doom, good overlap. Um, by this stage, I think Ford had learnt its lesson and removed the triangle of doom from many of its European cars. Yeah, I certainly feel a lot more confident pushing on in this car. I'm going to slow down just so I can simulate an overtake. So we're down to 80 k's. That's 100, yeah. Maybe a little bit more. Oh yeah. I like this car. Can I go drag racing in it, Gareth, please? So there we go. That was the highly exciting Ford Falcon XR6 with Barra Power. Um, I like that a lot. I mean, is, the suspension's a bit too firm for my liking. I'm not sure I could personally live with that every day. But, um, I mean, it'll just waft along at 100 kilometers an hour in absolute comfort, uh, but be a huge heap of fun when you want it to be. Um, 
yeah perhaps a bit too much performance really for the road but um, it makes alluring noises and i like it very much so there you go thank you to gareth for um not only letting me drive his car he's been polishing my au falcon as we shall see in a separate video but for now i shall say thank you very much for watching i look forward to seeing you in a future hubnut video farewell Oh, mama. <laughs>